Sure, sure. I can just see him doing it. My math professor's over there playing the flute. All I've got to do is tell him to shut up, and I can just imagine what kind of a grade I'll get in my mid-semester. Why doesn't he just add numbers and keep quiet? What do you want to make such a big thing about it for? A few professors get together and make with the music. They rotate. They're only here once a month. Well, if this keeps up much longer, I'm going to report it. How do they expect a student to do his work with the faculty making so much noise? Before it closes, I want to look something up. It's rather important. Oh, oh sorry, yes. Henry. Oh, Henry, I Good forgot to tell you. I received a letter from Paradise Lodge this morning. They're going to let Grace and me have the cottage next to yours this summer. Oh. Hey, Jay, that's wonderful. Well, so we finally convinced you. Now we can have music all summer, too. Why didn't you decide to do this five years ago? Well, I always wanted to, but Grace seemed to think. You don't seem to be very happy about it, Henry. On the contrary, I'm delighted. But only this morning I decided to spend my summer elsewhere. Well, well, Henry, you're joking. You but you always go to Paradise Lodge. Sure, yeah. Henry, you can't just walk out on us. That's practically desertion. Well, yes. yes. You spent five years telling me why I should join you, and now you've got our music. To... Sure. Perhaps they'll have music where I'm going. I don't know. Where are you going? Your guess is as good as mine. Good night. Do you carry legal forms? Sure, what kind do you want? Lease, trustee, mortgage, bankruptcy? Last will and testament. How many? Just one, please. While you're getting it, I'll make the phone call. Are you with your coffee? Are you there, dear? I'll get it, Della. Hello? Oh, hello, Henry. Henry, we were all wondering what... No. No, they're all gone. Oh, good, good. The reason I'm calling, Edward, is I wondered if you could drop over to my house for a few moments something I'd like to discuss with you alone. 
Well, I'd like to, Henry. But besides my law classes, the university has put me in charge of this housing problem, and I have a lot of paperwork to do tonight. Uh, is it terribly important? Oh, no, no, not very. We could do it tomorrow or the next day. It's just that I'm planning to commit suicide, and I'm making out my will, and I'd like to get some advice about hello, Edward. Hello. Edward. Hello. To commit suicide is wrong. Morally, ethically, philosophically, well, it's... Well, I'd be only too happy if you could give me a good reason why I shouldn't. Why is it... You give me a good reason why you should. My dear Edward, you are confusing reason with volume. Very well, I'll give you several. First, I'm no longer of any earthly use, and I use the word earthly in its true sense. That's absurd. Nowadays, more than ever, society needs men like you. Then society has a most unusual way of demonstrating it. Eight years ago, this university, which is certainly a most important part of society, retired me. They put my portrait in the library, patted me on the back with a few honorary degrees, and said, in effect, thank you, your work is finished. You are no longer needed. I'm now replying to them, thank you. Since I'm no longer needed, I think I'll move on. But, Henry, even if you are retired, for 50 years you've been absorbing philosophical knowledge. You've things to say, books to write. Yes, that's true. For the past eight years, I've been writing such a book. It contains everything I believe in and am capable of saying. If all goes well, and I don't have too many distractions, I'll have it completed in three weeks, end of February. Then on March 1st, I'll go away with myself. Might call it sort of a deadline. Henry, I... But, Edward, with my work finished, why should I continue to consume food and occupy precious space, which would feed and house somebody who is still capable of contributing something to this dubious thing called civilization? But you can't just... Uh-uh. You can't just throw away your life. You're not an old shoe. You're a human being. Well, considering the present state of the world and the responsibility for it, the fact that I am a human being is one of the best arguments I can think of for suicide. But, Henry, don't you see oh, that the my whole... My dear Edward, if I'd known you were going to take it like this, I would never have told you. Now, you must calm down, Edward. Oh. Remember, the doctor told you never to become where you're close. <laughs> well, my dearest friend says he's going to kill himself if you ask me to be calm. No, let me do it. You hold this. No, no, no. That's it. Now then, just swallow it down. That's right, now relax, relax. And believe me, he treats the whole thing as casually as if you were planning a fishing trip. Completely intellectual about it. No emotion whatsoever. Oh, poor Henry. Oh, this is terrible. We must do something, Philip. But perhaps this depression is caused by some minor physical ailment. Yes, maybe if you examine him, no, he might. No, 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 that's not it. And no matter how intellectual he approaches this, it has an emotional basis, whether he realizes it or not. If his life were a little more... Oh, well, I'll have him come to the office in the morning. Did he say anything no, no, about... please, please. Edward's got to get some sleep. And I suggest we all do the same. Well, good night, Edward. Good night, Edward. Good night, Edward. Odella. Oh, really, Philip? This is a complete waste of time. There's absolutely nothing. Else. All right, all right. Button your shirt. I'm amazed at your attitude, Henry. You have so much to be thankful for. You're in excellent health. How many men of your age can say the same? Oh, that's true. Most men of my age have been dead ten years. But the very fact that I am enjoying good health is one of my first reasons. Why should I wait for some lingering affliction of old age? Why should I wait for that moment when I plead with death to take me and relieve me of suffering? Why should I wait for nature to reduce me to the level of an animal? I've never allowed life to make me servile and cringing, and I refuse to let death do it. Now, if you're through rationalizing, Henry, maybe you'll answer a few questions. Well, of course, Philip, of course. When did you first become aware of this mental depression, this bitterness? This... But I'm not bitter. I'm not depressed. Why should I be? Life has been most kind to me. I've known a most wonderful marriage. While Cecily was alive, we traveled extensively during my vacations and sabbaticals. I've seen everything of beauty and grandeur that the world has to offer. I've read everything that I consider worth reading, and it's given me joy. So, with love, companionship, beauty, and joy, my life, up to a point, was full and satisfying. But now it's a different... Oh, Mitchell's new book. 
How'd you like it? Don't tell Mitchell, but I didn't finish it. Huh? Why not? Oh, toward the end, it became repetitious and, frankly, dull. A really sound reason. The end of my life is becoming repetitious and dull, and that's why I'm not going to finish it. Goodbye, Philip. Hi, Henry. Oh, Philip, I meant to ask you. I haven't been sleeping well at all lately, working late, you know. I wonder if you'd give me some sleeping pills. Now, you don't think I'd be that foolish, do you? Oh, my dear Philip, believe me, such a method never entered my head. It did mine. Very well. I suppose I'll have to obtain them elsewhere. No, no, no. That won't be necessary. I'll, I'll give you two, but no more. But if I had a full prescription, I wouldn't have to keep bothering you. I doubt if I'll need very many, Philip, but in case I do, I'll have them. No. By giving you only two, at least I'll sleep better. Thank you, Philip. Goodbye. Hello, Oscar. Sorry I'm a little late today. <laughs> That's right. Take some. Go on. Take lots of it. Go on. Here's some for your friends, too. There you are. There, then. Mind if I sit down? I didn't wait for you to say yes or no, did I? Beautiful day, isn't it? Gee, I had to sit down or I would have dropped these all over like the babies in the woods with those breadcrumbs. I said dimes, but wouldn't give you a separate bag for each thing. They could sell their stuff for a nickel. Golly, but my feet hurt. I don't wonder in those shoes. My loafers? Oh, they're wonderful. No, it's not the shoes. It's just that I've been walking a thousand miles today. Besides shopping, I've been looking for an apartment. Jason and I are simply going nuts. An apartment? Jason? Jason's my husband. You're married? Sure. See? I'm going to have a baby, too. How old are you? Nineteen. You know, you remind me of Pop. Pop? My dear young lady, I have great difficulty following your conversation. Everybody does. Jason says I play mental leap Oh. Mm -hmm. You do remind me of Pop. Your father? No, my grandfather. That's always the case. I either look like someone's baby or someone's grandfather. Oh, but that's the nicest thing I could say about anybody. Oh, Pop was a wonderful guy. Mm, maybe you don't really look like him. He was taller. Everybody is. Maybe it's just that I'm always hoping to meet somebody like him. Such a swell person. Died just before Jason and I got married. Oh, and Jason, your husband, he's a student? You can say that again. He's going to be a chemistry teacher. Uh, Pasteur was a chemist, you know. Oh, really? Jason's going to be a pastor someday, I'll bet you. Of course, he gets discouraged sometimes. He, he went through a lot in the South Pacific. He, he was on the Vincennes when she went down. Oh. It's tough for him now, but I keep him at it, and he's batting his brains out. <laughs> Gee, he's a wonderful guy. How bet you think I'm wacky raving about my husband? On the contrary, I think it quite laudable. Much more so than the modern practice of raving about someone else's husband. You are like Pop. He used to say things just like that without cracking a smile. You know, I like you. Oh, well, thank you. <clears throat> no, I'm afraid... And if you knew of an apartment or a basement or a kennel, honest, I'd love you till my dying day. Of course, it can't cost too much, because I'm not working anymore. I used to sing Ash at the cafeteria until the uniform got too tight. So we've only got Jason's allotment, and that isn't an awful lot. Where are you living now? In one of the trailers. But we've got to get out, because Virginia's had her baby. It was a boy and weighed eight pounds and two ounces. Well, I'm sure it makes good sense, but forgive me. I just don't understand why you should be homeless, merely because some infant weighs over eight pounds. I guess I was leapfrogging again. Well, you see, when Virginia went home to have her baby, Clyde moved in with Jack Hoyt and let us have their trailer. But now Virginia's going to be back on Monday, so we've got to get out by Saturday. Oh. For a moment it sounded as though you could have remained if the baby had weighed only seven pounds. But I'm terribly sorry. The only thing I can suggest is for you to consult the housing administrator. Oh, I left my name there a dozen times. I don't think the old creep who runs it even looks at those things you fill out. Young lady, I am not familiar with your usage of the word creep. However, if it's derogatory, you're very much mistaken. The housing administrator, Professor Edward Bell, is a most conscientious man and a friend of mine. A friend of yeah. yours? Well, the down we got things to talk about. You mean you've got suction over there? I am equally unfamiliar with your usage of the word suction. Suction, pull, pull, drag, you... If you are suggesting that I use my influence, the answer is no. Mm. However, I'll call Professor Bell and acquaint him with your predicament. Oh, thanks. Gee, I'll be camping on his doorstep. Just tell him that Peggy... Here, I've been talking an ear off you and I haven't introduced myself. I'm Peggy Taylor. How do you do? I'm Dr. Henry Barnes. A doctor? Good. Then you can tell me. Some mornings I wake up and I feel like I swallowed a bucket of worms, and yet other times I... I am a doctor of philosophy. I taught here at the university. I'm always pulling boners like that. Last week I asked the astronomy professor if you figure out my horoscope. You got a smile like Pops, a measles smile. Huh? I mean, it's catching. You should smile more often. I wish there were more to smile about. Oh, no. Not 
Just you two. That's what half the people around here are saying. The world's going to the dogs. Nobody's got a chance. There's no use living. Might as well commit suicide. In many instances, I must say, I consider suicide is completely justified. Now, wait a minute. That you got to prove to me. My dear Mrs. Taylor. Call me Peggy. How can you fight with anybody whose name is Mrs. Taylor? Very well, Peggy. I... That's better. You mind if I call you Pop? Now, look, Pop. How can suicide be a solution? I won't go into the philosophical reasons. You're not old enough to understand them. But let us take a hypothetical case. An old man is alone in the world. His work is finished. Mm -hmm. He's contributing nothing. His past was active. His present is dull and monotonous. Yeah. He has no future because it can only be a daily repetition of the useless present. Why not suicide? Because it wouldn't change anything. The gentleman would be dead. I consider that a drastic change. Well, what makes Mr. Hypothetical think he's living now? I just said he was living. I mean really living. He's just doing nothing but sitting around moping, thinking of reasons why he should kill himself. He's not alive. He's dead already. Just as dead as a dodo. Now, if he's dead, suicide's not going to change anything. It's just going to give him more of the same thing he's got. Suicide only puts an end to living, and vice versa. <laughs> the only way that he can change that kind of deadly existence is to start living with a capital L. And that's just what Mr. Hypothetical ought to do. Jesus, I gotta get home and fix Jason his lunch, and I want to see that other professor first. Bye. Uh, don't forget to call him. So long. Be seeing you, Pop. What makes Mr. Hypothetical think he's living now? Hello? Hello, Edward. Sorry to disturb you, but I met a young lady on the campus by the name of Mrs. Taylor, and I promised her I'd call you about any accommodation you might have. Oh, yes, Henry. Yes, yeah, she's in my office right now. Well, I'd like very much to help her, but at the moment, it's impossible. Of course, if anything should... Mm -hmm. All right. Goodbye, Henry. You see, I told you he was a friend of mine. I didn't doubt you, Mrs. Taylor, but even if he were your father, I couldn't do any more. Or any less, for that matter. It's a terrible situation. Maybe you're not it aware of it, Professor any... Bell, but a recent survey among the students showed that 27% of us expectant mothers on this campus have no real place to live. 27%? Good heavens, I... I didn't know it was that bad. It doesn't have to be elegant, just anything with a roof and four walls. But, Mrs. Taylor... Grace Lovett told me that, that during the war, before the barracks were built, you got a shipment of 600 V-12s. Where'd you put them? In garages, back of stores, attics, basements. Well, but they were single men, and where they stayed could hardly be called living quarters. I'll be satisfied with a living eighth or a sixteenth. My dear child, I... Well, I'll look in the file. Oh, thanks. But I won't promise anything. And, and don't be too fussy, because we're not... Really, we're not. Gee, if you just find a possibility, please tell me about it, because I'll go over and talk to the people. I'm good at fixing places up. Mm. Uh, you say Dr. Barnes is a friend of yours? Well, like I told you, I just met him a few minutes ago, but we had a wonderful friendly talk. Two I liked him right away. Two of those you were talking about he used his attic for a time. Of course, it isn't exactly livable, but the... Well, the old fraud. Do you mean to tell me he's got an empty attic and he didn't even tell me about it? What's the address? Ah, uh, no, no, not so fast. Business. I don't know whether he let you use it. Uh, he's been huh. keeping to himself pretty much lately. He wants to be alone. He's been rather depressed. Oh, don't worry, I can handle his kind. My grandfather used to get like that once in a while. Sometimes I'd cheer him up half a dozen times a day. I know all the ways. You do? You're an angel. Thank <laughs> you. I'll see you later, Bill. I was talking to Professor Collins. Hi, honey. How do you feel? I'm having twins that feel twice as good. Well? Maybe. I've got a prospect. I know. It's an old phone booth. And we only have to share it with four other couples. It's an attic. Great. we will see about it right after lunch. Belongs to an old man that used to teach her. Oh, hand me the bowls, please. You know, he reminds me of Pop. A little sour, but really awfully nice. 
Well, if it doesn't work out, Jim and Florence said you could stay with them. And I'll sleep in the locker room, study in the library. And we could say goodnight on the gymnasium steps. Wouldn't that be lovely? Well, it's a place to sleep anyway. We'll get a place if I have to build it myself. Now, start eating before it gets cold. Oh, Ma, I got me a report card. Oh, let me see. What's this 86 doing here? How do you like that? Four grades over 90 and all you can say is, what's this 86 doing here? But I want my husband to get 96. Well, then you should have married Einstein. You're tougher than my old man used to be. I'm a lot prettier, too. Oh, I told you you could do it. I am proud of you, darling. Maybe that's why I did it. So you would be. You know, even Collins didn't think that 186 was too bad. He said that after class that if I come back to school if next year... If you come back. Uh, when you come back. Well, there's plenty of time to talk about that. Oh, way. no, we'll talk about it right now. If you think that after all of our time... Well, let me tell you what he said, will you? He said if and when I come back to school next year, he thinks maybe he can wrangle me a job as a teaching assistant. Oh, Jason! Well, just a minute. I didn't say I was going to be the dean. You know what a teaching assistant gets? They pay him off in soap wrappers. I don't care if you have to pay them. They want you. That's the important thing. It's a start. Take it easy before you boil over. Oh, tell me, tell me. Uh, take your junk first. You know, I felt pretty good after Collins told me that. Then on the way home, I stopped by the post office. Got a letter from Bill Dudley. He's a dope. <laughs> yeah. That's what everybody in the outfit used to say. Used to call him Mortimer Snurd. Well, he's working in Chicago now, selling used cars, and he's averaging 150 bucks a week. So what? So he's making the rest of us smart guys look pretty silly. He's still a dope. You know, if your son turns out to be a pill, I'll know why. He said he thought he might be able to get me a job at the same place. Oh, now, look, we've been over this sort of thing a dozen times. All right, all right. I still can't help We knew you. going to school wasn't going to be easy. And besides, do you know that in a recent survey, 64% of all used car salesmen said they wish they'd gone into some other field? You made that up. You're always making up statistics. Why? Of course I made it up. Somebody's always making up statistics. Might as well be me. You'd be surprised how many arguments I win with my statistics. If I get in the spot, I just say, 36% uh, or 400 million. Nobody ever bothers to check up. They just say, my, I never realized it was that much. And when I walk away, they think I'm very smart. A little crazy, too. You know, come to think of it, you're completely crazy. Uh, not now. I, I gotta fix my husband's lunch. Oh, let him wait. Let him wait. Come in. There's a girl downstairs. What does she want? Wants to live here. Live here? Tell her that's impossible. I did, but she disagrees with you. I've got work to do. I haven't got time to... Where is she? Young lady! Hey, don't bother to come down, Pop. I'll come up. Oh, it's you. Why didn't you tell me I had room for Jason and me? But I haven't... You know, you're an old miser. I bet you sit around at night and count up every square foot of unused space. My dear Mrs... Mrs... Peggy! Uh, if you were in the least bit observant, you'd notice there isn't any unused space. Downstairs, I have a kitchen, a dining room, and a living room. Upstairs, my bedroom and my study. And that leaves the attic, and that's what I'm talking about. The attic? But no one could possibly live there. Well, you had a couple of V12s up there during the war. Oh, but that was an emergency. Well, what do you think this is? But they only stayed there for a week. And believe me, they didn't like it. No. Months later, they wrote with Miwo Jima, saying life there was terrible. But not nearly as bad as my attic. That you never lived in a trailer. Why, Jason served on battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and he was never sick once. But after ten minutes in that trailer, he tossed his cookies all over. All me. right, all right, I'll show you the attic. Couldn't be any worse than most of the places we've been living in. Why, last fall for a week, we slept in the depot. And if you've ever slept in the depot, you know there's just nothing like it. Trains coming in and out all the time. Why, you shall see for yourself. It's nothing but the inside of a dirty roof. Too cold in the winter, too hot in the summer. There. See for yourself how utterly impossible it is for anyone to live up here. When the house was built, this attic was meant to be a storeroom, not a place of habitation. Now are you satisfied? Oh, yes, it's perfect. I can fix it up just like House Beautiful. Do you think the bed will look better there or over there in that It room? is not for rent. You mean we can have it for free? You won't take any money? Oh, you're an angel. I knew you were like Pop. Oh, drapes. Gee, this is going to help us out an awful lot because, well, with me not working, the 90 bucks doesn't go so far and we have to lay it out for rent and everything. We're up to our hips in debt now. I don't it know. It is not available, Gratis, or any other way. I'm leaving here the 1st of March. Well, we'll be caretakers then. Oh, I promise I'll keep the house spotless. When you get back, everything will be in wonderful condition, honest. I'm good at... What's this? Well, that, that's a solar heating system. The, wa 
But I'm leaving permanently, giving up the house. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I just have to make it sort of a temporary arrangement then, I guess. At least three weeks will give me time to look for another place. You got a yardstick? I measure these windows over here for curtains. Never mind, this one's new. Sometimes you're... No. No. I don't blame you. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, Chronic. Oh, nice thing when a man can't work in his own house. So go from one room to another. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, and Hope! Oh! Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, oh, Ecclesiastes. Oh. Yeah? You downstairs, Professor? Jim, sorry, Papa. I think we blew the lights out. We blew the lights out. I told you it wouldn't work. No, I asked you. I had one of those three way plugs. I took two extension cords, all right, but when I tried to put in the third one, something Now, wait a minute. What do you have on the other ends of those cords? Three more three-way plugs. You had a nine-way plug. That's what you had. Well, don't stand there. Do something. Believe me, Pop. All I had in the last cord was a lamp, the heater, and the hot plate. Just a little teeny old hot plate, but the way that plug spit at it, you'd think I was trying to light up the World's Fair or something. But, honey, I'm only trying to tell you what caused the Why whole... do they call it a three-way plug if it won't take three? Why don't they put a sign out and say, you can use these two, but this one is for decoration? It will take three, but you had nine. It was too big a load, and besides, there were other lights burning. Oh. Oh. So that's what did it. When you turn on the lights down here, it Now, just a minute. It's bad enough to have my leg fractured, but to be blamed for it is... Well, call an electrician. I've got work to do. Well, it's simple to fix. Where's the fuse box? Oh, I don't know. I refuse to have any truck with them. I, I, I guess it's with those other thingamajigs on the kitchen porch. You know, it's a good thing this happened. Hey, why don't I light the candles? Jason, give me a match. You know, it's a good thing this happened, really. You should always know where your fuse box is, and you should inspect it regularly. Why, do you know that 22% of all fires in homes are caused by worn-out fuses? Is that so? I never realized that. Mm. I guess it was a blessing in disguise. Oh. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. What did you say? I was swearing. Well, the basement and the back porch lights are still working. I can't find a fuse. I'm going to have to drugstore and get one. Drugstore? Young man, you don't buy aspirin from an electrician, do you? Well, any place that sells tires on credit is bound to carry a fuse or two. I'll be right back. Put your sweater on. I don't need one. You know, Pop, bet you don't use these doors anymore. I think this would look much better in here. Glad I guess. Uh, uh, uh. My dear young lady, this room was decorated and arranged by my wife. She was a woman of great dignity, taste, and culture. And to me, this room reflects her character. Also, it represents a portion of my life during which I was most happy. It will not be changed. Okay, Pop. Just a suggestion. <sighs> Shall I start the fire? Give us more light. Mm. Might be rather nice. Who's this? My son. Where is he now? Dead. The war. This war? Aren't all wars the same war? That's what Pop always said. And ain't it the truth? Jason lost a brother at Saipan. Came pretty close himself. Why, he held onto a piece of a wrap for three days. He still dreams about it sometimes. You know, when I saw this picture before, I... Well, she looks more beautiful now. She belonged in candlelight and firelight. So did I. So did this room.
Come on, boy. Peggy! Come on, boy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Come on, come on. Peggy, who does he remind you of? Naked deer! Oh, I had a dog exactly like this one. He came to our door one night, so Pop called him Nicodemus, because, like in the Bible, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Who does he belong to? Nobody. That's a good part of it. Douglas says he just hangs around the store and sleeps in the alley. You mean we can have him? You may not have him, at least not while you're in my house. But, Pop, if he just runs around the streets at night, he might get run over. His habits in traffic are of no concern to me. I do not want a dog. There are too many distractions in this house already. I'll teach him not to bark, I promise. Yeah, don't worry, Professor. She has a way with dogs. Good. Then let her show him the way out of here. Please, Pop. He'd be such fun. And besides, do you know that 84% of all dogs that bite people are homeless dogs? Well, unless you want to make it easier for some person to get chewed up, I think we better take him in. At least just for a couple of days, until I can find a place for him. Well, fix the lights then, so that I can at least see what the beast looks like. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, Nick! Oh, oh, Nick! Oh, oh. There. Oh, I said you could tell him not to bark. You must stop right now. Oh, quiet, Nicodemus. Nicky, come oh, back here. Now you stop that. Does he have to make all that record? What's the matter with him? Oh, it's nothing. He probably smells the cat. Cat? Do you mean to tell me you've got a cat up there? Sure, we had that one in the trailer. We had mice. There are no mice in this house. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Pop. I think I saw one before. Young lady, if you saw a mouse, you brought him along, too. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nicky, take her. Oh, Nicky. Oh, stop, stop. Hello. Oh, hello, Henry. Edward tells me you've taken in a GI couple. I have not only taken in a GI couple, I have taken in a GI dog, a GI cat, and very probably a GI mouse. With this collection, you can see that the possibility of any sleep is a remote one. I was wondering, Philip, if you could send me over a few more sleeping capsules. Well, uh, what about those I gave you in the office the other day? Did they help? Oh, they did. Good. All right, Henry, I'll call the drugstore and have them send you over two more. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay, Pop. Come up now. About time. Amazing. You too can have a castle for twelve dollars and forty-nine cents. Really? I can't believe it. Of course, we had some of the things. Others we borrowed, and the rest we stole from your basement. Mrs. Landon said it was okay. Yeah, and we stole some bricks from the backyard too. You see, I told you they'd get along. I could see your ability as an animal trainer, as well as a magician. Now, don't give her all the credit. It was too easy. Besides, Nicky's probably lived with a cat before anyway. Uh, Oh, would you like some tea, Professor? Tea? But how can you possibly? It'll be too much trouble. No trouble. Table's all set and the water's boiling in the kitchen. Kitchen? Everything but the kitchen sink. Got to go downstairs to do the dishes. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, show the gentleman the rest of the apartment while I prepare the tea. Oh, delighted. Now, I think the best results can be obtained by you standing right there and pivoting. The den. And now we take a short stroll down the corridor and arrive at the study. Next, we pass through the cloakroom and we find ourselves in the library. Those drapes over the desk are paper from the dime store. Aren't they beautiful? Everything's beautiful, but where do you sleep? Aha. In the daytime, part of the living room. At night, the bedroom. Now, if you're worried about what we've done with all that old furniture, shirts, socks, ties, underwear, and pajamas. But how could you do it all in such a short time? You're looking at Mrs. Tom Sawyer. Had half the campus helping her. Oh, but I've got a lot to do yet. Slip covers are only pinned out. Plants and pictures are... Oh, forgive me, Pop. Please sit down. How do you take your tea? Oh, just tea, thanks. Nothing in it. <clears throat> all of you young people are a paradox. An enigma which I can't begin to fathom. You're genius, resourceful. Yet you have no discipline, no dignity. No respect for tradition, nor people. Such is the older generation. Yes. Well, maybe they haven't given us much reason to respect them. 
Hmm, possibly. But none of you seems to have any purpose. Where are you all going? What's your goal? Why have you come to the university? Well, I came because, uh, well, I want to be a teacher. Well, you don't have to say it as if you were learning to be a pickpocket. Well, after a while, you get a little self-conscious about it. You know, most of people think that you become a teacher because you're not smart enough to become anything else. Only the people that aren't smart enough to become teachers. Sit down, I'll get it. Sure, it's boiling. I'm curious. When did you first decide to teach? Well, I was floating around the Pacific one day, and I kept asking myself how I could wind up 6,000 miles away from home hanging onto a hunk of life raft. And I sort of figured it was like tinkers to Everest to chance. From ignorance to suspicion, from suspicion to fear, and from fear to hate, and from hate to destruction. And it all starts with ignorance. So, right there, I promised to pluck a seagull that if I ever got out of that spot, I was gonna... Well, I was gonna do what I could. Personally, I think that's a rather lofty ambition. Yeah. But the other day, I was reading something in Time or Life, one of those magazines that sort of stuck with me. Here we are, a great nation, and yet we spend over twice as much on liquor as we do education. Oh, statistics, huh? Yeah, but these are on the level. You know, when we don't consider our kids as important as... Well, I begin to wonder. Well, wondering is very important. I've always felt that if college did nothing more than teach a person to ask why, it served its purpose. It helps to develop an inquiring mind, and that in turn sometimes leads to a few answers. And the only answer is to do what you think is best, the best you can. When I shuffle off to Buffalo, if I can honestly say I did the best I could, I'll be satisfied. But that leads up to the philosophical question, what is best? Well, everybody's busy trying to figure out what they can do to fix things. What can I do? Here I am, 19 years old, not too bright, and four and a half months pregnant. Now, I can't hope to fix everything by myself. Why, the politicians say, give us four years and everything will be wonderful. Well, I don't believe it. I don't believe in four-year plans or five-year plans. That's why I want nine kids. Now, wait a minute. They're still in three-cornered pants. I want, I want to teach them to be fair and good and decent and honest and to understand that the other thought... Jason, I think he... Peggy, what's the matter? You better sit down. No. no, it's all over now, but it was the weirdest feeling. Like a swallowed little earthquake. Where was I? Oh, yes. I think too many of us just sit back and expect the kids to learn everything in school. But most of the time, that's too late. They're little heels already. It's got to start right at... You know, that was strange, your son moving around like this, just when I was talking about him. Significant, I think. Very significant. It's got to start right at the beginning. It's like Pop used to say, the kids have got to learn that besides the ABCs, there are a lot of other alphabets, and they're all pretty good. Instead of teaching us that some people have eyes that slant like this or noses like this, why don't they forget the things that make us different? Teach the kids the things that make us alike and will bring us closer together. That's why I want nine kids. Maybe seven of them will turn out to be horrible little beasts, but maybe two of them will be good. And like Pop used to say, maybe their kids and their kids' kids will be even better. And my gosh, if it keeps snowballing like that, maybe someday it'll be just natural to be tolerant and kind and, and good. And how long do you think that'll take? How long does it take a big tree to grow? But when it's finished, it's mighty beautiful and mighty strong. And what about in the meantime? Look, I'm just the big two, not the big four. And I know one thing. Unless the individual starts changing, we're just going to keep going from one mess to another. The long haul's got to start sometime, someplace, and it might as well start with your son. Gee, Pop, now that I've finished solving the problems of the universe for the next 50,000 years, we just have to say goodnight. Jason's got an exam tomorrow. But I want to discuss your theory with you. I haven't had a chance to say one word. Some other time, please. Honest, he's got to study. As the good professor has just taught me to ask, why? You mean I've been talking all this time for nothing? No, but seriously, why should I study? Why shouldn't I go out and get a job and make some money? Mr. Taylor, are you looking for a fight? No, I'm looking for an answer. And that word why is a pretty big word. <sighs> okay, give me a half dollar and I'll show you how Pop won more arguments than any guy in town. Well, what do you want to have? Give me a half dollar. Okay, close your left eye. What do you see? My half dollar. Mm hmm? Now, what do you see? The same half dollar. What else? What else? Well, I see you and the professor and the books That's over... That's just what I mean. Never hold money so close you can't see anything else. If you do, you're a cook goose. Now start sticking. <laughs> Gee, Pop, honest, I don't know how to thank you for everything. But if I were Nicky, I'd wag my tail. Well, I want to thank you. I've learned quite a lot tonight. Good night, Jason. Good night, Professor. Good night, Pop. I'm sure your son is going to be the finest there is. Don't you ever tell him that. 
You can tell him he's fine, but never the finest. He's got to learn early that there are a lot of other people just as good as he is. Good night. Say, hey, uh, that half dollar trick uh, works all right. It's no trick, just common sense. Oh, no, it's a pretty good trick, especially when you keep the half dollar. Come on, come on, that's half of my allowance. Look, I can't make a nickel around here. What do you really think of it? Oh, I think it's swell. Well, you might at least say it's gigantic, terrific, or colossal. Oh, honey, I think you did a fabulous job, but well, what I mean is it's still an addict. I want to give him more than that. You know, I've been thinking about Bill Dudley's letter and that job. I know you have, and I wish you'd stop. But three more years before I get my master's, three more years of addicts and trailers and... And each other. You always say the right thing at the wrong time. I'm all set to give you a big argument and... It's over before. No. <laughs> hey, you know, you could stand a haircut. Okay, give me six bits. Come to think of it, it looks all right the way it is. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Taylor. I like this, but uh, why are you doing it? Is it love for me or no love for studying? Mm, a little of both. Mm. Books. Why? Uh oh, remember, I'm an expectant mother. Right, right. Description. Thank you. How much is this? Thirty-five cents. There you are. You can deliver yourself some ice cream with the change. Thanks. Here. Oh. Nikki, get down. Get down. Oh, I'm sorry, Pop, but when I opened the door, he scooted right past me. Oh, you no. may keep him in the attic, but I will not have him roaming about this house like a coyote, spraying polluted saliva all over my best. What's that? Oh, your breakfast. I thought Mrs. Landon fixed your meals, but she said no. She just did the cleaning that she got your breakfast down at the end, so I thought you might like it in bed for a change. You don't have to do that, you know. Oh, I know it, but I like doing it. It's fun to do things when you don't have to. Of course, if you don't want it. No, 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 no. I didn't mean that. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind it at all. Uh, say, Pop, you send your laundry out, don't you? Yeah. Well, I do Jason's and mine down to wash the and I gotta pay two bits for the use of the machine anyway, so might as well throw yours in at the same time. Uh, where do you keep it? In the closet, but don't bother. That's too much trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Oh, unless the collars are too dirty. Nope. So long, Pop. Come oh, on, Nikki. Really? Out. I think it's... Out. It's ready. Be seeing you, Pop. Say. Thank you. Oh, forget it. Oh, Jason's doing all right in Kim's 
mystery, but that Professor Collins is such a cold-blooded fish. If you're a GI, he piles it on you with good. How's Jerry doing? Fine. Hey, why don't you and Jerry come over to our place tonight, and we'll... Maybe it's yours. It's not the lipstick, Peggy, and it's, it's not just his fault, either. It's, it's just that we're, we're growing apart, and there's, there's nothing I can do about it. He's learning a lot, and he'd, he'd like to discuss his studies with me, but I, I can't. I, I don't know anything about Plato or Spinozzi. I don't even know who they were. I, I didn't even finish high school. Naturally, he's, he's got to find somebody that he can talk to. I just... I just wish it could be me. Oh, look, now, you go on over and sit down. I'll finish these clothes for you. I'll be all right, Peggy. <laughs> go on, beat it. I'll call you when everything's done. <laughs> Pa! Hello? Going home? Yes. What on earth is... Oh, that girl didn't think I should carry the laundry, so Cynthia let Roger go home with Margie and let me put it in here. Oh, your shirts look all right? Hmm? Why, they're perfect. <laughs> yes. Here, let me push this. Okay. You know, Pop, education is supposed to bring people closer together, but yeah. sometimes it drives them apart if only one person gets it. What? Oh, it's a terrible situation, and Dorothy's not the only one. Just how you got from laundry to education, I don't quite follow. Oh, sorry, Pop. Leapfrogging. You see, it's like this. A lot of GI couples come from farms and small towns and wrong side of the track. Yeah? Well, what I mean is the boys are the first ones in their families to go to college. Mm -hmm. So everything's swell for a year or so. The husband goes to school and the wives work to help along and, and then something happens. The husbands start getting a little ashamed of their wives. They talk about Spinoza and the wives don't know who they are. Spinoza, and... Peggy. You see, that's what I mean. For all I know, he runs a grocery store at the corner. Who is he? Good morning, Henry. Hey, hello. <clears throat> uh, besides being a brilliant philosopher, Spinoza was a courageous and good man. Well, after a couple of mistakes like Spinoza, the husbands start getting a little careful. If they're invited to some professor's house for tea, they don't bring their wives. Afraid they might embarrass them. Of course, I don't mean Jason's like that. At least not yet, but I don't want to take any chances. After a while, the husbands find somebody they can discuss things with. Maybe pretty soon the wives find lipstick on the handkerchiefs the way Dorothy does. That's tragic. And it's got to stop. And I got a way to do it. I never doubted it for a moment. Now, why can't some of the professors talk to us once in a while? Hello, Grace. Gee, besides us dumb ones, there's some war brides from Holland and France, and I don't mean to teach us philosophy and history and chemistry, but just sort of get us acquainted with it. Skim over the top so we'll know what our husbands are talking about. I don't know who Spinoza is. Well, it sounds like a very good idea. But to organize such a program would be a tremendous undertaking. We'd have to arrange for a lecture hall, line up the professors. Yeah, or... we'd need a head man that had a lot of suction with the university. Yes, he'd need plenty of suction. Yeah, have to be respected by all the faculty. Have to be a pretty big guy. That's why I suggested you. Me. Now, see here, young lady. But you can't go back on your word, Pop. I never suggested one thing that could possibly be construed All right, to... all right. You can't go back on my word. It's the same thing I promised for you. You promised... You had no right to do such a thing. I have a book to finish, and I positively refuse to become but involved... But, Pop, do you realize that 36% of all college divorces are for this very reason? How do you want to contribute to making this rate still higher? Then don't you want to contribute if you want to... <clears throat> it is now ten o'clock. I will lecture until the I have always found that an hour of philosophy is just about as much as the average student is able to fidget through. First, to better understand the purpose of philosophy, let us go to the word itself. Philos, from the Greek, means loving, fond of, attached to, and sophos means wisdom. Therefore, philosophy is the love of wisdom. And to have wisdom is to seek the truth. Now, what the truth is, is something else again. To find that answer has been the driving force behind philosophers ever since man discovered that he had a brain.
When I say man, I do not mean to slight you charming women. No. I use the word man in its broad sense, its generic sense. For after all, man embraces woman. Get him, Jackson. We should warn Henry the old jokes don't go anymore. I think he just found that out. Well, you must admit at least it was a good way to get complete silence. <laughs> Unlike his contemporaries, Socrates believed that no one knowingly and willingly did wrong. Right conduct depended upon the proper insight. And the proper insight was not a gift of the gods, but the direct result of knowledge. Consequently, without knowledge, there was no excellence. There was no virtue. Socrates held that that was particularly true of civic virtue. Therefore, he condemned the Athenian state, which was democratic in form, and he... Yes? May we ask questions as you go along, Professor? If you wish. Well, do you mean Socrates was against democracy? He certainly was. Against democracy? Socrates maintained that only men with the knowledge of government should govern. Therefore, why should the people who had no knowledge of government have a voice in the selection? On a ship, the passengers don't elect a captain. He's appointed because he knows navigation. Yes, but the ship of state's an altogether different thing. If you give the captain complete power, he might take the ship where he thinks it ought to go, and that's wrong. Sure. The ship of state belongs to the passengers. They pay for it, they support it. They have a perfect right to decide where it's going. And if the captain wants to go someplace else, they've got to rather throw him out and get another captain. <laughs> Ladies, you have just jumped 2,000 years to a man named Bellomine who completely agrees with you. He believed in the God-given rights of man and that society must have the power to protect and preserve itself. His principles are embodied in our Constitution. Did he write any books? Yes, many, and many were written about him. One that covers his political philosophy is Democracy and Bellamine by John C. Rager. I doubt if the library will have enough copies. I have two at home which I will be glad to make available. Maybe the wrong people are going to school. Perhaps the husband should stay home with the children and the wife should go to class. <laughs> but who's going to decide what's good and what's bad? Well, a thing is good if it's useful. But a, a fur coat is useful at the North Pole. And it's, it's just a nuisance in the tropics. So who's to say whether it's good or not? And, and, and take milk. It's wonderful for some kids and some others might be allergic to it. Now there you've got something that's good and bad at the same time. Well, then maybe a thing is good when it has a good result. But it doesn't have to have a good result. It can be good in itself. For instance, if I leave Johnny with you while I go shopping, that's good of you to take care of him. Now, while he's in your trailer, if he falls and hurts himself, that gives a bad result. But it was still good of you to take care of him. Ladies, I taught philosophy for 39 years. And this is the first time in my academic career that I have ever had to remind a class that the period ended 20 minutes ago. Oh. No, 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 don't apologize, please. Perhaps this is precisely the reason Socrates never wrote a book. He believed philosophy was an exchange of ideas, just what you've been doing here today. I think you've accomplished quite a bit. Although we only skimmed over Socrates in your discussions, whether you know it or not, you touched upon Plato, Aristotle, Locke, Spinoza, Heraclitus, Bellamine, and many others. Now, before you go, I want to say that I came here today to teach you, and you have taught me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Gee, Pop, you are tremendous. Honest, the girls are crazy about you. And don't worry about your books. I'll be your librarian, and Dorothy will help. Hey, Dorothy, wait for me. Hans, go take good care of him. Bye-bye. Henry. Henry, it was wonderful. Congratulations, Henry. Bravo. Really wonderful. First time I've ever been interested in philosophy. I think it's a wonderful idea. If you need a mathematician for your program, I offer my service. Thank you. Or we also. Bradshaw said that starting next week, he was taking over philosophy. Is this true? I spoke to him about it, but I plan to reach Thomas Aquinas today, and until I do, I, I don't think it would be quite fair to him to, uh, to... I'll handle this next week. Did you enjoy it, Henry? Yes, very much. But I must admit, this is the first time I've ever lectured on Socrates standing behind the eight ball. <laughs> Probably won't understand it, but I'll try. Dorothy Parks, treatises on the philosophy of Lucretius by... Not Lewis Cretius. But you just said Lu Lucretius, I said. It's not two names, Lucretius. It's one name, Lucretius. Who's uh, J.R. Robinson? Well, he's, a, he's a philosopher. He plays first base for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ha, ha, ha. stories about women who, 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 well, whose baby is it? Ruth, she went to the library to get that new book you were telling us about, and she left Michael with me. Oh. Come on, oh, well, if you would do it again, please let me know first, or put a sign on the front door or something while you scared me half to death. Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. I, I didn't realize I meant so much to you. Well, you do. So does your baby. I'm glad, because, well, last night, Jason and I decided something. If it's a boy, we're going to call him Henry Barnes Taylor, and if it's a girl, she's going to be Henrietta. I'll try to live up to it. We only hope he does. I've got work to do. Peggy, I... My pension isn't much, but I want you to know, there's always a few dollars if... Well, you know, Jason, he wouldn't take a nickel. And as a matter of fact, neither would I. Thanks, Papa. We've got to go along. But Jason tends the furnace, and you do my laundry and cooking and... and... No, sir, Papa. And I'll see you at dinner.
resorting to sentiment to cloud a philosophical issue. I doubt if I'll need very many, Philip, but just in case I do, I'll have them. Come in. I'd like to borrow your thesaurus, sir. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, well, as you know, Piggy's friends are having a shower for her tomorrow. I want to give her something. Oh, well, that's nice. She'll certainly appreciate it. What is it? It's a tiny top tab. It says any child can put it together in a jiffy. Well, he can't put it together in a library, I'll tell you that. Any directions come with it? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Shouldn't be too difficult. Maybe you can find out where this thing goes. It's called RB1. RB1. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Right, bottom one. Yeah. Now that you have cross pieces A and B bolted together. Yes. Making sure that the bolt heads are on the outside. Mm hmm. Place cross pieces A and B in an upright position. No, 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 no. no. Now just stop right there. I want to show you something. Now, here. Here's cross piece A. Hmm? Here's cross piece B. See? Now, I place them in an upright position. Huh? Now I reach for RB1. That's what always happens to A and B. Have you tried putting them flat on the floor? Yes. But you try it. RB1. Mm -hmm. I tried that. Yeah. RB1. Now, this should be RB2. Yeah. Get in there. Uh huh? No. No. You need the top section. What are those screws for? That's outside somewhere. It says so, outside. Something's wrong. Nope. 
Not quite correct. Not quite correct, no. Nearly, but not quite correct. What do you think, Nicky? Huh? Sorry. See? Mm -hmm. Oh, oops. Oh. Perhaps we better send for that child after all to do it in a jiffy. Well, here's the tub. Tub? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A couple other things down here. Mm -hmm. Can you make it? Yeah. Where does that go? I don't know. Oh, it must be for the mother. You know, round the waist, safety pin, Gold. oil, powder. Naturally. What's that? Must have sent it by mistake. Oh. Now, let's see. Plato weighs about five pounds. Schopenhauer, pound and a half. Aristotle, about... Yes, that's about right. Easy. Got to make sure. Well, that does it. I want to thank you, Jason. Oh, forget it. I think I'll go down and get a glass of milk. Oh, yeah, I'll take these. Uh, oh, say, Professor, I yeah. came down to borrow a thesaurus. May I? Oh, certainly. I was using one this afternoon. Here. Here it is. Thank you. Well, how's the work coming, Jason? All right. Mm -hmm. All except chemistry. Oh. I seem to be Colin's whipping boy. No matter what I do, he's still not satisfied. Well, maybe he expects more from you than he does from the others. No, it's... It's just that he's got no use for G.I.s. Oh. I don't expect any favors, but... I wish he'd try to understand that after kicking around the South Pacific, a guy gets... <laughs> Have you ever thought about getting her a blanket? I believe it. Jason? Mm. Jason! Don't clump across the room. Take it easy. I'll be as quiet as a bird dog. Oh, it's no use. It's too late. Why didn't you get here sooner? Well, you told me to take it easy. I was sneaking up on him. It's probably gas anyway. It was not. Gas goes vroom, 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 and your son goes vroom. I think you're imagining the whole thing. I am not. This afternoon he gave me an awful kick. So will his father. If you don't get to sleep. Now, come on, it's late. Uh, 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 I'll get your pill. Oh, i got to get up anyway. Where are your folic acid pills? Oh, I ran out yesterday. But don't worry, I'm not anemic. It's just a Why didn't you get I... some more? Hmm. Why? You sound like Pop. Why, why, why? I want to know. Why? I forgot. You see, we're not... How much do they cost? No, five dollars. But you, you didn't see... have the money, did you? Oh, don't worry. Your allotment check will be here in the morning, and then... Jason! It's no good, Peggy. It won't work. What, Mom? What are you talking about? It's time for me to stop this nonsense and take that job. But you've got a job, an important job. You're going to be a teacher. Yeah, and how am I doing it? By making you live in a place like this when guys on relief do better. But, but we didn't expect the government to support us completely. It's only supposed to... I'm not blaming anyone but myself. Oh, but you shouldn't, darling. You're just tired. Yes, yes, I'm tired. Tired of feeling guilty. Tired of watching you make a dollar do the work of ten. Oh, the pills aren't that important. Why, women have had babies for thousands of years without... Oh, I know that. It's not just the pills. Last month, we had to wait for my check before we could get your teeth fixed. And the month before that, we had to leave your shoes at the shoemakers for a week because we didn't have the money to pay for them. We need clothes, and we can't afford it. I haven't complained, have I? No, you haven't. That's why I feel like such a heel. You're wonderful, darling, and, and you deserve a lot better than this. And I want to give you everything that... But I've got everything, everything I want. 
Why, I'd rather be where I am at this moment than any other place. And I'd rather have what I have. But try to see it from my standpoint. It's tough enough getting along with just the two of us, but when they're three, what? just won't work. When we came back to school last September, I, I wanted to talk things over with you, but, but you were so happy about everything that I just... You don't want the baby. Is that it? Oh, I didn't say that. You didn't have to? Oh, Peggy, darling, please. I didn't mean it that way. Honest to God, I didn't. through all this stuff. Hey, knock that ribbon. I want to save that. Cookie? No, thanks. Made quite a nice hole, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, this blank is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, I just love it. Well, it's not the present I intended. I ran into some difficulty on it. I stayed up almost all night. I still couldn't finish it. Now, don't get frightened, Pop. I think you better call Jason and the doctor. Well, I... Please, Pop. I figured it out from every angle, Professor, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to quit school. My wife's pregnant, and we're living in an attic. Does I... she mind? No, sir. And you mean you're just quitting? I don't think that's quite fair, sir. I told you I'd try and get you that teaching job. It wouldn't pay enough. Wouldn't pay enough. Maybe just as well you do quit. Feeling that way, you wouldn't make a very good teacher. Professor, is there a Jason Taylor in this class? I'm Taylor. He wants you right away at the hospital. Sign this, Sir. Yes. Why? I tell you, I'm perfectly all right, but the doctor won't listen to me. Just smiles and pokes around to see if I'm done or something. But the afternoon nurse, that's the worst. It's time for our pill. We had our lunch yet. Should we brush our teeth? Now, they're my teeth, but the way she talks, you think half of them belong to her. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pop, if you had her around, you'd be up to the New Testament in no time. Well, How's Nicodemus? Fine. But tell me, who's supposed to cheer up who around here, eh? <laughs> You're amazing, Peggy. Zeno and the rest of the Stoics have been mighty proud of you. Oh, I'm not the courageous little woman you think I am. I tried that the first day didn't work. It was so brave and cheerful. It was disgusting. It locked everything up inside of me like a safety deposit box, and oh, I felt awful. Then Dr. Conway, as he was talking to me, gave me a pinch, a hard one. It made me cry. All for two hours, almost floated out of here, but I felt good afterwards. I can think and talk about it now without getting all richy inside. I'm glad. Because there's something I've been wanting to say to you, Peggy. Shoot, Pop. I might get a little moisture on the eyelashes, but that's good for me. Well, 
I don't know if it'll be of any consolation or not, but I want you to know that although you've lost a child, a life wasn't lost. It was merely exchanged. That day we met in the park and we talked about Mr. Hypothetical wanting to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that I was Mr. Hypothetical. I feel like one of those twice-born people Henry James wrote about. Through you and the other girls, I've learned that despite all of my fancy degrees, I was never an educator. Only an instructor. Now, wait a minute. No, no, no. The same as the half dollar. I held the book too closely. An educator isn't one who gives examinations and lectures, but someone who lights up dark places. And that can happen anywhere. Never too soon or too late. My hopes are your hopes now, Peggy. And with you and Jason to help me, maybe Henry Barnes can be everything you wanted Henry Barnes Taylor to be. Here I go again. <laughs> now I've got a little surprise for you. I'm going to move into the library and you and Jason will have my room. I think we can fix it up so that you'll be... Jason's leaving tonight, Pop. He's going to Chicago and take that job. Oh, no. We talked it over this morning. He still feels it's all his fault, is that it? I tried to explain. Even the doctor told oh, me. Oh, that's not it. He, he's just using the attic and the baby as an excuse. He's running away from himself, Pop. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he'll be back in a few weeks. I hope so. I'll join him there. He, He's going to look for a place. Well, after all, he has a right to live his life the way he thinks is best. His way may be right. I, I don't know. That's the one. I'm sorry, I'll have to ask you to leave. We've got to take our bath now. Do you think we can both get into that basin? Oh, well, bye, dear. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Give Nicodemus a hug for me. I will. Bye. class at night. It's all ready. It won't take a minute. The mailman come. Not yet. How is she? Physically, she's fine. She's worried about Jason. Doesn't say What's much. What's he but... doing in Chicago? Selling used cars, working for a fellow named Carson. The whole trouble, I think, is because she had her heart set on Jason becoming a... Oh, we played until 9.30. Mm -hmm. Rather unsatisfactory. We miss our viola player very much. Well, I'm sorry, Philip, but I haven't had time. I'm trying to finish my book. I've been trying to get him to go out more, but he just... I... Mailman. Oh, I hope it's good news. I hope so, too. Oh, thank you. You know, I'd always thought of Jason and Peggy and the rest of these young couples here being sort of Adam and Eve starting all over again, and maybe this time doing a little better. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose one thinks of every new generation that way. The trouble is the apple's always there to tempt them. And it seems the more so-called progress we make, the more apple seeds we sow. They become shining, tempting apples. $50 money order. And he's found a cute new apartment, and, and his job gives him a lot of spare time so he can take some courses at Chicago. Of course, it'll take a little longer that way. But do you know that 32% of all GIs are... I, I'm such a rotten liar. Not one word about his coming back. I wouldn't mind if he were only doing what he really wants to, but I know he's not. Well, I guess you can't expect miracles in a couple of weeks, can you? It'll all work out somehow. More coffee, Doctor. I guess it's time for me to pinch you again, Peggy. I'll leave her alone. Tell Peggy I'll be back this afternoon. <laughs> 
place old time oh, let I... me show you a 49 that came in this morning you won't believe it but all carson is asking for that i'm car. looking for mr jason taylor well now i think he's busy for the moment but i'll be glad to take care of you this car belonged to a lady who had to leave for china the day the car was delivered so you see it's only been driven about where that... is mr taylor over there by that green convertible thank you well you sure come to the right place fella let me show you a 49 that came in this morning well good morning you certainly came to the right place. Let me show Mr. you... Mr. Taylor. Hello, Jason. Hello, Professor. How's Peggy? She's worried. Why haven't you sent for her? Oh, I will eventually, Professor. It's just that right now I... Every time I think about her, I feel guilty as if I... Is that why you haven't even called her? I keep seeing that attic. Those stairs she had to climb a dozen times a day. And maybe if I'd been able to offer her a decent place to live in, it wouldn't have happened. Oh, but the doctor told you there could have been a hundred reasons, and there could have been none. Now, be honest, Jason. It's not the baby that makes you feel this way. You two had some wonderful ideas, sound ideas, on how to live and what to live for. And they imposed a responsibility on you, and now you've deserted that responsibility. Isn't that why you feel guilty? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I Say, Professor, that man over there is a sales manager. He's been riding me in the last couple of days. Make like you're going to buy a car. No, I'm afraid this is too expensive for me. Well, I've got a 42 on the oh. back lot there. Might be just perfect for you. Well, let's look at it. Hmm. I had a talk with the dean this morning, Jason. He said if you came back now, you could take makeup examinations. And if you passed them, you'd not only be reinstated, but the instructorship would be a certainty. Uh, even if I wanted to, I doubt whether I could pass that chemistry exam. As for teaching, I make more here in two months than I would in a year. Is that so important? Yes, I think so. Look, Professor, I got a line on an apartment. It has four rooms. You can walk around in it. It's got heat, sunlight, and a backyard. It's a place where a fellow can live with his wife without feeling that he's letting her down. Now, is it so wrong to want to feel that way? No. But I thought you once promised a flock of seagulls you were going to teach and try to help make people more understanding. Sure, and lots of others made promises, too. When I got out of the service, there were millions of them. This time, it was going to be different. The parade went on for miles. And suddenly, I look around and everybody's gone home. Now, why should the finger point at me? Why is it my responsibility? Well, simply because you realize that it is a responsibility. Not enough people do. But I think I've got a right to ask the same question everybody else is asking. What do I get out of it? Well... If you're a teacher, you'll be underpaid, taken advantage of, and be at the mercy of trustees. If you adhere to the educational status quo, you'll be considered archaic. And if you have any progressive ideas, <laughs> there's no telling what they'll call you. You'll write a book or two, which no one will read. And just when you're beginning to enjoy all this, you'll be retired. That's really something you look forward to. But strangely enough, if you don't outlive your usefulness, you'll be happy. You'll leave a few people here and there through the years a little more enlightened than when you met them. You'll feel that you've made a contribution. That's all you'll get out of it. That's not enough. I find it singularly curious that if a doctor tells us that peanut shells are good for us, we eat them. If a chemist maintains that one gasoline is better than another, we use it. We are guided by experts on everything from soap chips to foreign policy, and yet on the most important thing of all, how to live. We pay no attention. Ever since man began to think, great minds have been telling us that the pleasure in living is in helping. That happiness comes from a simple, useful, constructive life. 
but yet we call this kind of advice infantile, impractical, and hopelessly idealistic. Okay, Don't you see, Jason? Carson just came in. As soon as you're finished, he wants to see you. I'll be right there. I'm finished. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Jason. And then I remembered your mentioning the University of Chicago. So I suggested it to Jason. He thought it was a wonderful idea. So we went over to the university. You're not a very good liar yourself, Bob. But... Don't worry, Pop. It, it isn't as though I hadn't expected it. I wrote to my sister. I... I'm going to go stay with her for a while. Oh, no, Peggy, you can't do that. This is your home now as well as mine. You, you must stay. Sorry, Papa. Just too many memories around here. Gee, the way I feel, I get on your nerves something fierce. Nope. Better get and get quicker. I'll go batty. I practically all packed. Just have to go up and change. I thought I'd catch that seven o'clock train. Very well, then. If you think that's best. Pop, don't you see that? Come in. Come in. Jason! I'm so glad to see you. How are you, sir? Professor Barnes told me the dean said I might take some makeup exams. Of course, of course. You came back with Henry? No, he doesn't know I'm here. Neither does Peggy. Oh. I I'd rather he didn't, sir. I don't know whether I can pass the exams. Well, if I do, I'd like to tell her myself. And if I don't, I'd rather not raise her hopes too much. You're right, you're right. I hope you pass the examinations. All the time you were gone, we had no viola player. We need a viola player. Come along with me. I'll call the other professors, and you will arrange for all the examinations. You, you, you are looking very well, Jason. Oh, forgive me for speaking and distracting you. Now you will have to figure that last part all over again. Right? Right! You receive 82%. I have it all figured. Well, let me see. I think that gives you 79. But you better check it. I may be wrong. I never was very good at adding. I'll take your word for it, Professor. Good, good. Now the chemistry examination. That's the one that really worries me. Drop something, Taylor. Here's a new setup over here. Let's try this one. You were in the Navy, weren't you, Taylor? Yes, sir. What kind of duty? I was on the Vincennes till she went down, and then later. That yeah, was a little there. tough. I was on the Wasp. That wasn't exactly a picnic, either. Nothing worthwhile ever is, Taylor. I'm just beginning to find that out.
Well, the least you can do is try again. But Collins said he would phone the moment the examination was over. But maybe he's forgotten. He's not as interested in music as we are. Hello? Hello? What? He, he took them all. I don't know how many there were. Walk him around. Give him coffee. Plenty of it. Henry took sleeping pills. Sleeping well, pills? How many? How many? How many did he take? I don't know. Sixteen. Sixteen? How do you know? How do you know? I, I gave them to him. But you, you gave them? Why? Why? If I hadn't, he would have gotten them someplace else. I but think there are so many that's enough to kill him. I gave them to him two at a time. But what didn't it occur to you that he might save them up? Yes, after he told me the first two had helped, I was positive he was doing just that. And, and you still kept him. right on doing it. Oh, you fool. You blithering. Sure, I kept on because they weren't sleeping pills. What, oh, what, what kinds of pills were they? Harmless. Annoying, maybe, but harmless. <laughs> Look up your legs. Be more active, Pop. All right, now come on. One, two. No, no, you've got to keep walking. But I just want. No, sir, I had enough trouble getting you down. Now drink that coffee. Oh, but I've had 12 cups already. I'm not sleepy. Please let me go up. I... Drink it. Good. Now another cup. Oh. That's all there is. Well, make some more. No, 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 not her coffee. I'd rather die. Come really. on, Pop, I'd... we're going to walk. Yeah, but I... Jason! Oh, hey. Jason, I love you, but we haven't got time for that sort of thing. Now, Pop's taking a whole bottle of sleeping pills. What? Well, what'd you do that for? Because you two left me, that's why. Well, how do you like that? So you're gonna pick up your toys and go home, huh? Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. This morning you told me about my responsibilities. What about yours? Why, if anything's gonna be accomplished, it's gonna take you and me and everybody else. You've got what millions of people are begging for. Education, knowledge. And you're trying to destroy it all with a few lousy pills. You're no better than a book Jesus, burner. stop talking and make him walk. If he doesn't keep walking, you Yeah, but die. he's got to want to keep walking. Whether he's alone or not. I can think of an awful lot of fellows that would have liked to have had the choice that you have now. Maybe your son was one of them. Well, what are you going to do, walk or sleep? Ron, lift those legs up. Yes, sir. <laughs> God willing. And you know something? 27% of all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know all about it. Now, fix me something to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's play it again from the beginning. 